Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be solving the leak of question and repeated elements in a size 2 and array. Alright, so we're going to be given an integer array called nums and we have these following properties. So the length of it is going to be 2 times n. Now the number of unique elements we're going to have is going to be n plus 1. Now, one thing to note, I know in all the examples that the unique elements are going to be sequential, right? So it's one, two, three, and so on, but that's not necessarily the case, okay? And, okay, so we have that, and exactly one of the elements of nums is going to be repeated n times. So let's take a look of an example and try to understand it better. Okay, so based on all the properties we just saw, let's try to extract as much information as we can. So in this case, we have this array, right? And let's just take a look at the length of it. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the length of this array is equal to 10. Now we want to find what the n value is. So we know n is equal to the length of the array divided by 2. Or in other words, 2n is equal to the length, right? We just rearranged it. So now keeping this in mind, that's just 10 by 2, which is, well, equal to 5. So n in this case is equal to 5. So what does that mean? So that means that the number of unique elements we have is going to be six. So I'm just going to say six unique elements. Okay, cool. So we know this information. Now, how exactly can we find a solution? So let's actually first look at the most naive or brute force solution that we can come up with, which is we can use a set to keep track of the elements we visited. And if at any point a uh, element has already existed in the set, that means that, well, we've already visited it at least once before. That means it is the repeated value. So let's just see what that looks like in code directly since it is pretty straightforward. So we're going to define a set over here. And now we're going to iterate through each of the numbers. So let's just do for num in nums. And the first thing we check is if num is in the set. Now, if it is, that, that means, well, that's the repeated number. But if it's not, we have to add that number to the set. So s dot add going to add num. So that's it. That's going to be our solution for this. Let's now try to discuss the time and space complexity of this. Now, how many unique elements are we going to have? So let's do everything with respect to n. So capital N is going to be the length of the array. Okay. So the number of unique elements we're going to have is going to be n by 2 plus 1. So this over here is the space complexity, right? Which is nothing else but big O of n. Now let's look at n. Uh, and essentially what that means is we add all of the unique elements to the set, right? So now let's look at the time complexity as well. So now in this case, there's a small observation that we can make. So we would assume that it would be theta n and we have to iterate through the entire array, but we don't, right? We need to think about how many unique, sorry, repeated elements are we going to have? So the answer is actually n, but how do we come up uh, across that, right? So we know that n plus one is a unique element and the length is 2n. So that's nothing else but 2n minus n plus 1. But now, this is actually going to be 2n minus n plus 1 minus 1. Now, why are we doing this minus 1 over here? Now, the reason for that is because the repeated value is going to be included in this, right? So one of the unique elements of the 6 that we're looking at in this case is the repeated value itself. So this over here is just going to uh, simplify to 2n minus n, which is equal to n. So that means n of the values are actually repeated. So in other words, let's say we only look at n array, right? So that's going to be, in this case, 5. So let's say we only look at 5 elements. That does not guarantee us to actually find a unique element. And this is a perfect example of that, right? So even if we look at the first n plus 1, that is not going to guarantee us that we find a repetition. Because in this case, like this is the worst case, right? Where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the elements, the first n plus 1 elements are unique. And what that really means is there's no repetition. So if we look at just one more extra element, that means that no matter what, there is going to be a repetition of at least two elements, right? So in this case, that is going to be the time complexity, right? So that is nothing else but n by 2 plus two extra elements, right? So plus 1 is a unique element, and we're going to do an extra one. That, that means we already have seen the unique elements, and we're looking at one extra one at least. 
right? So this is going to be the worst case time complexity, which is again, just big O of N. So now let's actually try to look at a different solution for this. So the basic idea over here is that we know for a fact that N of the elements are repeated, okay? So let's actually see how we can use this to our advantage. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a total sum of this array, okay? So the total sum is in this case 25. Now, how exactly can we use this information? So a very cool or interesting thing that we can actually do is we can actually get rid of all of the unique elements. So what is the sum of the unique elements going to be? So a simple way we could do that is we could take a set of this, right? So sets don't have any repeated values. So set of the list and we can take its sum, okay? Now, in this case, for example, we could just do an arithmetic series uh, formula, but we are not guaranteed that all the unique elements are going to be consecutive, okay? So this is how we're gonna get the sum of all the unique values. Now, what are we gonna do with this? So the uh, this sum is just one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. So that is actually nothing else but 21, okay? So I'll just write it down over here. So that's 21. And this is sum of all the unique elements, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we have the sum of the unique elements and we have the total sum. So when we actually find the difference of this, so 25 minus 21, which is equal to four, now this four is actually going to be telling us the sum of all the remaining elements. Now, what exactly are the remaining elements? Well, the remaining elements are nothing else but those that are being being repeated, right? So how do we find out what that exact element is? So we know how many elements are being repeated, right? So when we, we saw that the n, there are n numbers that are being repeated, but we're actually gonna be dividing it by n minus one. Now the reason for that is because one of those values is part of this sum already. We have already accounted for one of those values. So we only need to account for the remaining n minus one values, right? So we're just gonna do four divided by n minus one, which is equal to, in this case, four by five minus one, which is four by four, which is one. So that means that the number one is a number that is being repeated, and that makes sense, right? Which is correct, right? So one is the rep repeated number. So let's look at the time and space complexity for this as well. So the time complexity of this is gonna be, so we have to find the sum of the entire array, so that's gonna be n, then we need to find the sum of the set, so that's also gonna be big O of n, right? And that's about it, right? So that's just gonna be big O of 2n or this big O of n, okay? And now the space complexity over here is, well, we're actually gonna be using a set again, right, in this case. So we're using that set to find the sum. So it's gonna be the same as before, which was well, big O of n. So yeah, so this is a mathematical solution to this. And let's just see what this looks like in code. Okay, so this is gonna be our solution. So we have the sum of nums, and we subtract it with the sum of the unique elements and we divide it by n minus one, right? So I just did the value of calculation for n over here, but instead of storing it in a variable, since we're only using it one time, I'll just directly substitute it over here, okay? And that's it. So this is the value we're gonna return. So that should be it. Those are the two solutions that I did find, and thanks a lot for watching, guys, and do let me know if you have any questions.